Siobhan Bailey. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I do applaud the Government um, for the energy it's putting into trying to improve our connectivity. There are undoubtedly still areas in my rural constituency of Stroud that are not spots, and having zoomed constantly in my River Severn village throughout the pandemic, the pizza wheel of doom when the internet is struggling and people getting frozen in strange positions is no longer funny, it's just annoying. Uh, so I recognise that improvements are needed and I see what the government is trying to do. But Many of my constituents are experiencing a David and Goliath situation and I am very worried about that and that's where I'm going to focus my comments. Trying to deal with the might of the telecommunication companies is a pretty scary feat for any constituent, even before some of the tactics are deployed that I have sadly seen. In my short tenure as Stroud's MP since the 2019 election, uh, I've dealt with a number of mast issues. Actually, uh, some people are quite amazed with how many mast issues we've had coming up locally. Um, I've just, just to sort of summarise a couple of when the minister has been kind enough to, to, to be willing to look at case studies uh, in my area, but there's been locally um, uh, issues with masks in a village called Painswick where Stroud District Council sadly infamously missed a deadline uh, on their side which effectively led to permission by default which is on a, a very controversial site. That matter is rumbling on but it has caused a lot of upset and stress for neighbours and the land owner. Uh, I understand this is an issue that other councils have faced in the country as well. There have been local applications in little villages in areas of outstanding natural beauty which effectively seem to rely on terrifying elderly landowners and it took a village to club together to get some support and professional advice uh, to support that landowner to deal with that particular issue. There's a Stroud farmer who has a currently has a 10 grand uh, uh, rent annual payment for an existing mast. He's been offered a significantly, significantly ama uh, lower amount. Um, we know that farmers struggle to make ends meet. We know that government is telling farmers to diversify and a lot of these incomes as a, as a really fundamental part of, of getting food on their own tables, let alone putting food on ours. Um, that, that there is really limited negotiation. This farmer is a big burly guy and he doesn't feel bullied by it. He just said, take it away. And but it goes on and on and, and he doesn't feel like he's in a very strong position. I believe fundamentally that this rollout will continue to stall uh, if the legislation that is, is, is really relying on the fact that the, that the remedy is courts. Um, uh, and, for, and we know that the courts, so the only remedy is for those that can afford it. Um, disputes have drastically increased stress, uh, frustrations and anger um, have also increased since the 2017 ch changes and I, I fear it will get worse. Um, looking at where we are now, the Electronic um, Communications Code does grant, it's a bit more technical, grant the code operators the right to access land uh, to install and maintain apparatus and to seek such rights to be imposed by the court where agreement cannot be reached, as I've mentioned. One of the key changes uh, introduced in 2017 was to modify the pricing mechanism that the court should apply, and as we've heard from colleagues in the chamber, there hasn't been a proper look at uh, pricing and valuation, even in the consultation for this bill. This was a change from the market value um, to realign it along similar principles to compulsory purchase. And we all know how painful compulsory purchase uh, has been uh, for many of our communities, uh, not just in Stroud with examples there. Um, the statutory assumptions to place the valuation um, in the no scheme or network world. Uh, this change was actually against the findings and recommendations of the Law Commission and effectively uh, the Nordicity and Analysis um, Mason uh, okay, which is uh, beyond my pay grade, but I'm, I'm told it's very, very important. Um, we're now in a situation where the code oper operators typically portray landlord, no, landlords as a grasping group who cause delay to hold them to ransom for more rent. Um, this is not my experience. Where uh, the code operators are seeking to acquire new sites, there's actually a range of different reasons uh, why challenges are put up uh, by constituents, uh, by local villages and by local communities. Um, I'll, I'll just give you a few of the common themes that I've 
uh, come across. High on the list is the potential effects of uh, conflicts with the landlord's own use of the wider landholding and other tenants' activities. Uh, the potential impact on the landlord's own future development aspirations. The visual impact of unsightly and often poorly designed electronic communications apparatus on the wider land, uh, landholding or host building. These, these are high up the list before rent comes into it. Any adverse impacts on neighbours, disputes with neighbours about a mask going up, any adverse impact effects on the marketability of other land or buildings, adverse impacts on the investment value, structural issues and future maintenance of a building the, uh, or a structure on the site, the extent of any extended health and safety uh, drop or fall zones, the implications of a further development granted as per permitted development. All of those are on the list. It's not just about rent, it's not just about money. Um, Stroud constituents inform me that the code operators have generally um, sadly uh, proved insensitive and unsympathetic to addressing such issues. Instead, they've interpreted the ECC changes as granting them rights over any third party land almost for free and on terms that they can dictate to do almost anything at any time. This is the mindset of the entitlement of over private rights and I believe the blinkered belief of digital communications uh, being the only important thing that is influencing uh, decisions. And we know that the code operators are looking to acquire large numbers of sites and to renew hundreds of leases. Um, we know that because of those targets, no doubt, there's process uh, orientated uh, internally and in all, pro uh, all probability uh, the resources driven by ob objectives and milestones and less about humans uh, and less about the people that it affects. Notwithstanding, I fully accept that we are thinking about humans all over the country when we're trying to improve connectivity, but I am worried about the balance. I also find that bullying of local people is not acceptable and no matter how much my Stroud constituents want faster this, that and the other and how much we actually need it to work in many accounts, they do not want their neighbours bullied and they do expect government legislation to be able to protect the weaker party. And I think on any analysis it will be the constituent landowner and not the telecommunications that is usually the weaker party. Um, local councils, I'm finding councillors uh, talking to me, they pretty, feel pretty imp impotent uh, with this. Constituents don't feel that the local councils have any power, uh, so that again there's that sort of disconnect between who they feel protected by uh, uh, and sort of the, the changes of the land, uh, legislation is an issue. I'll just give you a bit of an overview on the kind of process that the constituents have found, but Mr Deputy Speaker, please shout at me or nod at me if you want me to, uh, to wind up, which I can, because I realise I'm taking some time, but these are important. It starts off with a landlord um, being approached by a site acquisition agent, uh, so not necessarily a company that's well known, uh, seeking to access land to undertake a survey. That request is then accompanied by a, a threat effectively, to gain access via an application uh, to the upper tribunal. Um, this pointed out as being almost impossible to resist in this approach, uh, and the likely cost to the landowner, if there is resistance, uh, will be a vast sum of money. So that's, if you think about the, the elderly landowner, not my big burly farmer, the elderly landowner that's worrying about this. Access is often then willing, unwillingly granted. This confuses neighbours, this starts arguments locally, but it's usually granted. A survey is undertaken, the landlord is sent ahead of terms, sometimes with an imploding offer of capital payment if these agree, are agreed within a short period. Without any real attempts to negotiate or to listen to concerns raised, notices are then served under the ECC, which cock the gun for reference to an upper tribunal again for the imposition of an agreement. I will give very to my friend who's working. Can I thank uh, my honourable friend for so um, clearly summing up the process of what the Secretary of State in her contribution called community engagement? I, thank my friend. I, I only wish I was uh, a, 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 as, as, as beautifully dramatic and exciting when I spoke because I, I, I do, I'm conscious I am reading out a list to the chamber but this is an important list because this is the experience of so many constituents. It's scary, it's dull but it's also uh, it's, it's a, very, uh, a very worrying time for them. Um, 
If residents and businesses are lucky, as some of my constituents have been, um, it's usually around this stage that they instruct professional support because they're so worried, and then they start to think about how to object to the application. That's pretty late. It's pretty late in the game, so that, so that we're, we're a long way down the track, but people don't realise that that's an option, and a lot of them can't afford it. However, in most cases where professional support is provided, what I'm experiencing is they are successful in getting the applications refused. The question also surrounding the lack of investment by the code operators in good quality design, mitigating features such as screening um, or land, structural landscaping, reflecting the arrogant assumption that they can simply pass on societal costs of their development onto the public at large and claiming say, at the same time that planning is a barrier uh, to de deployment. So all of these things are often lost in that long process before we get help to understand what, what really should be brought into these planning applications. And it's clear that where the planning permission is granted, landlords come under a real threat um, of a reference uh, to the upper tribunal given the extremely high cost of litigation. It's quite a lot of people will fold at that point regardless of the merits of their case. I have to believe that the code operators do not set out to believe in an egregious matter, manner and I, I've met so many uh, uh, telecommunications companies who too come to consultations and they're, they're good people, they do want to find solutions but this is time and again the, the, the programmes that the agents uh, acting on their behalf are, are running through and my fear is that the totality of the changes that we're looking at now far from redressing the ba balance of power they tip the scales further in fa um, favour of the code operators and as a consequence the proposed changes in the bill will actually exacerbate the marketplace issues that are being experienced um, even if they try to resolve some of the legal um, anomalies. Um, I fear I'm on to my last bit now. I've lost sight, uh, I think we have lost sight, sorry, uh, of the mission, um, which is how best to deploy networks uh, uh, in the most appropriate places and uh, trying to fix the issues we've experienced since 2017 with a pe that piece of misused and effectively abused legislation um, that was effectively supposed to be used as a last resort, but is now very much used as a de rigueur uh, by these companies, I don't think is the way to make uh, improvements for these landowners, improvements for the companies, nor is it a way to, to roll out uh, the, the improvements that the country wants to see. I would like to know from the Minister um, how the bill addresses what's become the main issue with the framework, which is the way the costs fall on landowners and which have become the, ta uh, the latest, effectively the latest bl bludgeon to beat them with. Um, the cost of seeking advice is high uh, and, and often the cost of seeking advice uh, will, will, be, uh, will far outweigh any consideration that is offered um, even over a 10 year period. Um, Whatever the man merits of the landlord's position, to contest any matter in the courts is very costly and then the extreme costs associated with losing mean that a few but the largest with much at stake will be able to take this step as I've mentioned but I think we've got to just keep hammering home. I, I want to know uh, why when we have the experiences of things like the water companies, of the environmental uh, uh, fights that are happening all over the country, when we know that um, the Human Rights Act and Article 6 provides the right to uh, a fair hearing, why are we not seeking to strengthen the alternative dispute resolution mm. option and thinking about making it mandatory? I, I, I disagree with my friend, uh, learned, my honourable friend on, 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 down on the, on the French bench today. I, I don't see why we should wait to see if this fails uh, to make improvements uh, that, that will support everybody to achieve the goals. Um, I, I think finally just on the valuations I, I was really disappointed that we haven't worked harder to think carefully about the valuations the information that we have coming forward is it's not that there is a, a slight chunk off uh, what they've already it's, it's not even that it's trying to rebalance some sort of uh, uh, ability to look at utility companies it, this is a dramatic change uh, the offers that are coming out uh, to, to, to people with masks on their land and, and it, it it doesn't fear fair um, it won't achieve the goals and and I, I would like to hear from the minister whether we can take another look at the valuation structure um, but I, I do as well as it's been a negative speech but I do thank the government for the work
they are doing, but I think we can do better uh, for everybody involved, and I think by doing better we will achieve uh, some serious connectivity around the country, and particularly in rural areas. Mm. Mr. 